just now uh, we are going on. Uh, Professor uh, Valeria Lewis from the Nanomark Conference. Uh, Professor Lewis uh, joined us uh, from the University of uh, Calabria, Italy. Uh, the, this presentation is going to be pre-recording. The title is Stability of uh, uh, Bituminous uh, Emulsions uh, Induced by uh, Near Biosurfactants Physical uh, Chemistry Characterization. Uh, Professor, do you hear me? Yes, no, I, I can hear you, you can hear me. Yes, uh, we can hear you clearly. Welcome again. Welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, just a moment. I have a problem with the cam. I don't know why I'm not able to... Ah, okay. <laughs> yes, we can see you clearly. Okay. Welcome again. If you are ready, uh, I can start your uh, pre-recording uh, presentation. Yes. Okay. Thank and you. Also, you are welcome. Also, I want to say again, I would like to remind that this virtual Congress is recording. Good morning, everyone. My name is Valeria Loise, and I am PhD student at the University of Calabria, Italy. My research field concerns the study of bitumen for the road construction. Today, I would like to show you the results of the last research carried out with my research group. So, I will talk about the stability of bituminous emulsions induced by new biosurfactants. I will, um, I will begin by briefly describing what bitumen is what emulsions are and how it is possible to stabilize them. I will show you pros and cons in the use of bituminous emulsions. Then I will talk about the way to obtain stable uh, bituminous emulsion. Finally, before exposing the research project and the obtained results, I will describe the technique of analysis used. The use of bitumen as a building material has been known since ancient times thanks to its adhesive and waterproof properties. Although natural deposits of bitumen can be found in America, it is possible to produce it during the refining process of heavy crude oil by removing its lighter fractions. Bitumen is made up of two main components. These are called asphaltins and maltins. In particular, maltins are made up of resins and oils. According to the colloidal model, resins, resins constitute a low polar continuous space that stabilizes asphaltins in maltins. Regarding the emulsions, uh, they are a colloidal system consisting of two phases, a dispersed phase and a dispersant phase. Usually emulsions are classified as oil in water or water in oil according to the distribution of the two phases. In most cases, the two phases alternatively do not blend with each other or they remain suspended one in the other. However, it is possible to stabilize an emulsion through the use of surfactants thanks to their amphipathic nature. Surfactants reduce the interfacial surface tensions between the two immiscible liquids. They form as a protective film that prevents aggregation of the drops. In particular, the surfactants 
tant general used to stabilize bituminous emulsions are ionic, cationic or anionic, according to the hydrophilic head. So, drops of bitumen are shielded by the polar heads of the surfactants that prevent coalescence phenomena. Moreover, polar head favor bond with aggregates. For example, the use of anionic surfactants will favor a strong bond with acid aggregates. Bituminous emulsions containing a percentage by weight of bitumen ranging from 55 to 75 percent. The percentage of surfactant depends on the surfactant itself. However, it is normal value is uh, around 3%. Currently, bituminous emulsions are mainly used for the maintenance and rapid repair of rods. One of the advantages of using these products compared to the hot mix asphalt is that they avoid the vaporization of low molecular weight hydrocarbons and polycyclic aromatic compounds thanks to the low operating temperature. Naturally, this property leads to a reduction of the production costs in terms of energy required to reach high temperature. Far more, in this case, there is no primary aging phenomenon. Unfortunately, the mechanical performance of bituminous of uh, bituminous um, emulsions are less satisfying compared to hot mix ones. And bitumen could be washed away by rains since it is partially so soluble in water. The techniques of analysis used to carry out this research were substantially two, rheology and nuclear magnetic resonance. Through time cure tests, also known as dynamic temperature ramp test, it is possible to observe the response of a material to a stress. These tests show the viscoelastic behavior as a function of temperature. In the time cure used for this study, the trend of the loss tangent will be shown, which indicates the softness of the system. The other technique used is nuclear magnetic resonance. It is a non-destructive analysis that allows to have information on the structure of the samples. In fact, every spin has its own relaxation time dependent on the chemical surrounding. For the purpose of this research, three different bituments provided by a local company were used. Chimar with penetration grade 7100, Alma with penetration grade 7100, and Adriatica with penetration grade 170-210. Chimar bitumen is commonly used for emulsion because it is easily emulsifiable. For these reasons, it has been used as a reference. Then, an emulsion containing chimar bitumen and an anionic surfactant supplied by the company was prepared. The emulsion was prepared by 55% by weight of bitumen and with 6% by weight of surfactant. The prepared emulsion was stable for over 72 hours. Then, we proceeded with the preparation of the emulsions containing the other two bitumens and following the same procedure used for the chimar emulsion. No emulsions were obtained with the Adriatica and Alma bitumens. We therefore decided to follow two different approaches, modification of the bitumen in order to obtain rheological properties similar to that of chimar, and chemical modification in order to compensate for the chemical difference between Alma and Adriatica and Cimar. About the first approach, the time cure tests performed from 25 to 70 degrees with a thermal scale of 1 degree per minute 
show that the bitumen schemer and alm have an extremely similar rheological profile as expected from the penetration, while Adriatica has a different profile with a sole gel transition temperature of about 10 degrees lower than the other two bitumens. Then, the last bitumen was modified with a commercial tax in order to obtain a rheological trend similar to the reference bitumen. It was possible to reproduce the rheological profile of the reference bitumen by modifying the Adriatica bitumen with 1.5% of sasobit. As regards Alma bitumen, on the other hand, it has been modified with a waste pro product from animal fat production process useful for lower viscosity and increasing acidity. Controlling acidity is the strategy that is normally used to obtain an emulsion. The results show that with the modified Adriatica no emulsion was obtained, while a good emulsion was obtained for Alma modified with 4% of vast product. The second approach provided a chemical characterization of the three bitumens through NMR. Each sample was prepared using, the, using tetrachloromethane as a solvent. In the NMR spectra acquired for the three bitumens, it is possible to identify four different peaks. Attributable to the aromatic, aromatic hydrogens, to alkyl proton on uh, carbon in alpha to the uh, aromatic ring, to methylene and methyl groups. The four regions were integrated and normalized to get the fractional proton distribution directly from the integration curves. Therefore, the NMR spectra highlighted that the reference bitumen is one with the lowest percentage of aromatic hydrogens, while highest, highest per percentage of aliphatic hydrogens embedded at the aromatic ring. This would indicate greater substitution on the aromatic ring. Therefore, Adriatica has been modified with a surfactant useful to balance the aliphatic and aromatic components and to increase the acidity of the bitumen. Finally, we obtain a good emulsion by modifying Adriatica with 2.5% of this surfactant. So, in conclusion, Rheology has been useful for studying the stability of emulsions, while NMR is a powerful and useful technique for characterizing bitumen. bitumen. We obtained good emulsion for both bitumen, and we tested the use of eco-friendly best products as emulsifier for bitumen. Unfortunately, we had some problems, like an excessive production of foam for the emulsion with Adriatica and difficulty in breaking the emulsion formed with Alma. But the study is at the beginning, so we hope to be able to improve our results. Thank you for the attention. Thank you, uh, Dr. Valeria Luis, for your uh, nice presentation. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can okay. hear you. Okay. Just now, uh, I want to ask all of our participants, do you have any uh, questions uh, for this presentation? Uh, to Dr. Valeria Lewis. You can write uh, your questions to chat part, or if you want to uh, ask uh, your questions by yourself, uh, we can uh, open your uh, system voice, but first of all, you should write 
uh, you have a question to Shepard. You can wait a few minutes. I think there's no question for now. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Thank uh, you. If any participants uh, want to ask anything, you can uh, send an email to uh, Dr. Lewis uh, about her presentation. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you. You're welcome.